In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the event history log of a Schweitzer SEL501 relay as it performs a time overcurrent trip function. Right now, I have the settings set in such a way that the operating current from this vacuum cleaner will be sufficient to initiate a 51P trip. That's a time overcurrent phase trip. So here we go. I'm going to turn on the vacuum cleaner. And we have our trip event on Relay X, time over current, phase B. So I'm going to come over here, turn that off again. Now I'm going to walk over here to the console, the serial port console, where I am communicating with the relay. I'm going to type in the event command. When I do that, it's going to give me a history, kind of a blow-by-blow -blow account of what happened with the relay uh, just before and after the trip. It records 15 cycles worth of history. So if I come up here, what I see is relay X is indicating the current. This is instantaneous current values taken at quarter cycle intervals over time. So these four rows constitute one cycle of the AC power. These four rows, another cycle. These four rows, another cycle. So right here, uh, instantaneous values, minus two amps, plus six, plus two, minus six, and so on. So it's a sine wave there. And we happen to be capturing it, uh, we're getting peak values around uh, 6 amps. Uh, notice that uh, we show over here the letter P under the 51P column, lowercase letter P. And that tells us it has picked up. Now, it took much longer than a few cycles for this relay function, this element to actually time. So you do not see when it first picked up. It, al it already has been picked up at this point in the event history. So it's showing us that element has picked up. And then here you see a capital letter T, which means it tripped. And you see a number one appear under the out column, telling us it has asserted the output contact to trip the relay. So scrolling down, we see here that we still get current monitored through uh, uh, phase B of relay X. We still see current here. And then by this point in time, it drops off. So this is when the trip event uh, took place. That's when the output contact was asserted. And it took a little over two cycles worth of time for the circuit breaker to actually open and interrupt the current through phase B. And then down here, you see zero current through phase B. So this particular relay has recorded 15 cycles worth of event history. And of course, it cannot start at the very uh, beginning of the event when I turned on the vacuum cleaner because from there to the trip was much longer than 15 cycles worth of time. So what it did it is it showed me a snapshot where the trip event happened fairly early on in the 15 cycle history. And then I can see what happened afterwards. And especially uh, when I take a look at data like this, how long it took for the circuit breaker to open. This is very important and useful diagnostic data because it tells us a lot about the health of the circuit breaker. If, for example, it took much longer to interrupt the actual current through that phase, I might want to look for uh, failures of the circuit breaker mechanism or maybe even problems in the DC trip circuit uh, explaining why it would take longer than normal for the circuit breaker trip. So it's very useful diagnostic information. And I just want to show you how these letters here in the text printout shows us what's going on inside the relay itself with the elements. Again, the lowercase p tells me that it has picked up under this uh, phase overcurrent 51P element. The capital letter T tells us when it has actually initiated a trip. And we see that with a number 1 under the output column where it's asserting the output contact to actually trip the relay.